Hello, hello, hello. We're going to be doing a sweet bulldog puppy with watercolor. If we haven't met, I'm Viv with Art with Viv. And this week's Little Monday Mini is in tribute to my bulldog. She passed away this past week. We had her for 10 years, so let's just get started. Now, the first thing I did was I mixed up a nice dark color. I am using Daniel Smith Essentials. So I'm only using six colors to do this whole bulldog i'm using three primaries a cool primary i mean a cool version of each so i've got two yellows two blues and two reds in my six so i have mixed up a nice dark for the eyes i'm gonna go ahead and paint those in i'm leaving just a little bit of a highlight in there so that his eyes have a little bit of life i'm working on Fa fabriano artistico 140 pound cold pressed paper block and it is the bright white. I really like Fabriano and Arches. Arches, however you want to pronounce it. Those two are my two favorite brands of paper, in case you wanted to know. Now I've used my colors and I've mixed up a nice brown and I'm starting to paint in his patterns here. I'm also um, putting in a little bit of that darker color on the edge of that brown. I'm drawing in some of his patterns, some of his spots with my pencil because I've they're not quite dark enough and I wanted to make sure that I followed that pattern correctly and I am just going in with my browns and I am doing an initial wash on each one of his of his little wrinkles and where his brown spots are I'm gonna let you watch for a second and I will be right back Once you get that initial wash while it's still wet you've got your brown wash down on your pattern um i'm going to take a little bit of that darker color that i used for the eyes and mix it with the brown to make a darker brown and just start dropping that in while it's still wet to darken up some of the areas of the bulldog's face where it's and i'm making a little bit of pattern texture because he has a little bit of darker dots his, his muzzle is white but he has some darker dots. Now, if you are a member of my Sweet Art Squad, you'll get the colors, the color mixes, what I used to mix these colors, the full supply list, an outline drawing and reference photo. It's only $5 a month. It's less than a fancy coffee. So if you're interested in getting the exact mixes, the exact colors I used, an outline drawing and the reference photo, then you might want to consider joining that. I will link that below for anyone that's interested I mean for five dollars a month you cannot beat that so now I have taken that darker brown I've outlined some of his wrinkles some of his spots I wet his chin and then I'm dropping some of that darker color right at the tip of his where his little bottom lip and his top lip are meeting up and then a little bit on his top lip there's a there's a dark little spot there so now I'm just sort of blending out where I've outlined those wrinkles i don't want them to be a hard edge there so i'm just taking my wet brush and i outline i mean i blended that outline now i'm going ahead and adding a little bit more dark areas sort of defining those wrinkles and those nose ropes that's what the little wrinkle that goes across a bulldog's nose is called a nose rope and so i'm just defining that with some darker browns and the way that i've got that darker brown is i just mixed the color that i mixed for his eyes with that brown color that i mixed if you have the three primaries in the in have six if you have six colors for six primaries two two of each primary a cool and a warm you can mix almost any color you want now you're not going to be able to mix colors that are like um synthetic that will match a synthetic paint because those are man-made paints but you will be able to match just about any natural color that you need 
So now I have just mixed up a really deeper brown. I'm going ahead on dry paper. I'm sort of, there's he's got a little spot at the top of his nose and I put in his little nostril. I'm also taking this darker color I've switched to a smaller brush and I'm taking this darker color and just making little hair marks just little tiny dots and dashes with my brush and I have switched over to my fine finer detail brush and what I'm going to do is later I will put a, a wash of water over that and that will soften it so it's going to add texture a little extra color his little nose rope this part of his nose rope is a lot darker than the rest of his face so I'm just putting that darker color over top but notice that I'm leaving a little bit of that um base color shining through I'm not covering it completely with the dark color another thing make sure that your base your initial wash that lighter brown wash is completely dry before you do this or it'll just blend together and you won't have those crisp detail marks and that's what we're going for now we're going to soften those up later but for right now we just want to put those in it's okay if it looks messy you got to get through the messy ugly stage and I promise it, it's going to look fine. So don't worry. Just be brave. Go ahead and put that. Just put it down like I'm telling you to. And you'll see how we fix it later on. I'm also adding a little shadow under his little jowls right there. He's got some. But this is the first time in 18 years that we have not had a bulldog in our house. We have a, an American Pit Bull Terrier. He's my rescue pup. He's the last dog we have left. Now I've just taken a little pink and brown and mixed that a little rose color and brown for his nose. His nose is actually white. But Miss Girly Girl, she passed away this past week. Um, she had some complications from a vaccine. And she was an older dog and it just, she could, her body could not, could not handle it and she passed away. So we have been very, very sad about it. So of course I had to do a little bulldog puppy. Now I'm taking some clean water and I am blending over these areas where I just put that down. I let it dry just a little bit because I want the texture to shine through, but I want it to be soft. So I'm just softening it with some clean water, a wet brush. Now I'm coming and darkening up these little wrinkles around his eyes. But um, if you ever get a chance to, to have a bulldog, I 10 out of 10 recommend. They are the best family dogs. They are sweet dogs. They are expensive not only to purchase one, but they are expensive health-wise. They have a lot of issues. So if you don't have a deep pockets for vet bills, don't get one. We had three, believe me. We spent tens of thousands of dollars on those dogs' health, but they were fairly healthy. Our other two lived till 12. Girlie only lived until 10, but she probably would have lived till 12 if it hadn't been for the vaccine that she received that caused her issues. So now I have gone in with another layer of that lighter brown around the eyes. I'm also putting in his shadow where his ear is sort of laying on his neck and it's making a shadow and a few of the wrinkle shadows. But I'm just doing another layer right on top of that initial light brown layer. What that does is it warms it up and it darkens it up. Notice I'm leaving his cheek a little paler. I'm also coming and lifting up some of that color over his eyebrow to make sure that that's a little bit lighter. He's starting to look like a little puppy now and I'm pretty happy with him. Now I've mixed up sort of a brownish gray color here. His muzzle is white, but it does have some shadows. So I'm just putting in those shadows with sort of a pinky gray color, almost, uh, you know, just sort of a neutrally pinky gray color. And putting in those shadows across his white muzzle and on the white parts of his chest, making sure that I'm making it be, have little, um, what am I trying to say? Have little tick marks, little hair marks so that it looks like hair and it doesn't, it's not just a solid line because of course he's furry so we want to have those in there i'm just working on that sh that little wrinkle over his eye and in the front of his little eye and he's got a little shadow down between his forehead between his two eyes 
and just sort of blending in taking some darker colors adding some shadows but I'm doing that making little hair strokes for the shadows not trying to do a solid shadow I'm darkening it up with just a little tiny tiny little tick marks little dash marks little hair marks whatever you want to call them and I'm just putting that in and darkening up in the areas where he has a little bit of shadow it also gives him a little bit more definition in his face he's starting to look more like a three-dimensional bulldog by adding the shadows and the light and this little bulldog doesn't exactly look like my girly girl she was a brindle and but she she was brindle and white and she was a really pretty bulldog she was really big she was 75 pounds which is a little bit big for a bulldog. They're usually 55 pounds. The males are max. But she was a big she was a big girl. And we will miss her terribly. So when I when I get in my feels, in my emotions, I usually paint. Painting helps me work through those emotions. And painting this bulldog gives me a little bit of I don't know, a little sense of relief from her death it lets me it let me zone out for a while so of course this is a voiceover I don't talk as I paint because I have a hard time doing that I can but I I didn't with this one I just put on a little music got quiet got focused and it helped my brain relax and release some of that grief so painting is really a good source of relaxation when you need it grief relief working through issues so I highly recommend it now I'm making some more brown I want it to be a little bit darker and I'm just adding in more of those shadows you notice I'm just layering 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 to get the shadows as dark as I need them I didn't go in first with the really dark I go light to dark when you paint with watercolor and I'm using this um I'm making a little bit lighter down the front of his ear while it's still wet and I just lift a little bit now I'm adding a little bit of this deeper um, sort of a burnt sienna darker sienna color around his eyes now I am just taking a little bit of that color that we used for his eyes but I've watered it down and added just a tiny touch of brown to it and that's going to act as the shadows for his the white chest his white chest so I'm just putting in those shadows and I'm making sure that I'm doing raggedy brush strokes you know so that it's not just solid lines I want to indicate that he's he's furry we got a little furry baby and then I'm just blending some of that out as the shadows that go across his white chest and his paws are white as well but as a, you know white has all different colors in it I'm also adding a little bit of that pinky gray color to the top of his head so that it sort of separates him from the background I didn't do a blue sky a blue sky would have probably looked really good behind him but I'm trying to keep this fairly short so that you don't spend hours and hours getting warmed up now I'm just coming in with a little, another layer of that darker brown and putting the shadows in across his ear, under his ear, and of course I'm making it jiggity jaggedy so that it looks like fur. I'm adding a little bit more blue in there to make it a darker brown into that mixture and just adding in the shadows there. Now I'm going to add the shadows with that paler sort of gray, pinky gray that we made. Put in his little toenails on the ends of his paws, and I'm just using brown to do that. And then we're just going to use this sort of shadowy color that we've been using on this white fur across his paws. So that he has a, a little bit of shadow on that paw, so it's not just a big white blob up there. You could even add more shadows if you wanted. The whites of his eyes have a little gray tint to them they're not completely white so I went ahead and put that in as well and he's starting to look really cute now I'm just gonna wet these fence posts he's leaning he's pulled himself up on this fence post so that he can look at that little bird that's up there in the corner staring down at him so I'm just wetting the fence post and just sort of dropping in some of the browns it doesn't matter 
whatever you have on your palette that's mixed up and I'll probably come back and add a little bit more blue so I can gray this down just a bit add some shadows where his little paw is where his little paw is casting a shadow and I'm doing this wet and wet you see how those gray streaks are just sort of blending out I'm trying to just give an indication of wood grain I'm not trying to get fancy with it I'm not trying to get super detailed I just want to give an indication of it so I'm just doing that wet on wet I apologize if you can hear my other dog snoring in the background he is cutting some logs I'm hoping you can't hear him though but I can hear him he is very loud um, he is tired we went on a walk this morning and so he has he has been all around this day now I'm making a little bit of a darker gray and it is leaning a little bit toward green which is fine um, you know sometimes fences get that little bit of mold look to them they get some green growing on them so we'll just go with that we're not going to get ourselves too worried about what colors the fence are now I went and made sort of this brownish green I'm gonna put it on my bird's back we're just gonna go ahead and paint him in real quickly just start him he's got some yellow on his back his breast and his abdomen his little tummy are yellow so we're just gonna go ahead with this greenish yellow color put that in there I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a blue he has a little bit of blue on him as well I don't really know what kind of bird this is um, but we're just gonna go with it he is talking to the little bulldog they are having a little conversation here at the fence they're catching up on the neighborhood gossip as bulldogs and birds are known to do so we're just painting his tail in blue he's got a little bit of blue on the top of his head there's some blue across his body his wings are actually gray so we'll put those in a little bit later right now we're just trying to block in some of the colors on this sweet little bird now his eye I've just mixed up a little bit of a darker color just like I did for the bulldog and painting his eye he has a stripe that goes across his little eye and of course we're gonna put that on the tip of his beak now we're gonna do his little gray wing feathers and they're going across the back of his body and and of course I'm also making it feathery marks I'm not making it solid everywhere I'm gonna take that gray we're gonna paint in his little feet and he is holding on to a little branch as he is spilling the tea he's spilling the tea to the little puppy he's telling him what's going on in the next door neighbor's yard what kind of new toys that dog got if there's anything interesting don't going down the down the street he is letting this bulldog know everything and this bulldog is eating up the gossip he is drinking up the tea that the little bird is spilling so they are having a great conversation they're talking about who got a new collar who got some new toys if there's any new puppies on the block that might be available for play dates so he is just catching up on everything now I've just taken once that fence dried I just took some darker gray and made lines so that it looks even more like a wooden fence now I'm mixing up a little bit of brown so that we can paint in that branch that the little bird is on talking to the pup and we're just gonna sort of paint that in and put it under his little feet just make little branches you can do whatever if you want to put leaves on your little branch you can I chose not to I wanted to keep the focus on my pup and the bird so I didn't get too fancy with the little stick and it is still a little bit cold here everything hasn't blossomed out so we don't have leaves on all the trees yet so I just went with a bare little branch now I'm just coming back I am gonna add some more of this darker blue color to the tip of his beak and he's got a little a little pattern that goes around his head I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in paint in some darker shadows across his wings and separate some of those tail feathers with that dark blue also he's got a little bit of pattern across his back that goes into that yellow so go ahead and put that in there and just add a little bit of that darker blue to the the blue top knot on his head 
And I've just darkened up his eye. Now I've left a little tiny white dot in his eye that is just white paper shining through for the highlight. I'm gonna go ahead and add some detail to those wings. Add a little bit of shadow to his tail and just a little bit of shadow to the white part of his face with a really, really pale gray and some shadows to his body and his backside. His face is not solid white. He's got a little shadow, so that, that's what we're putting in there. And underneath his belly, down his little legs, we're just trying to put in some shadows here and there on the branches. And we are almost finished. And if you wanted to add a background color, you could. Feel free to do that. I just didn't, I wanted to keep it at least under 30 minutes. And there you go. I think he's looking cute. What else can I do? Let's, let's darken up some of these shadows between his toes. Just do a little, a little extra detail work there. And add a little shadow to the top of his head so that he is separated from the background since he has got a white little stripe down his face and on his little nose and there we go he is looking so so cute i really like this and um i appreciate you watching please share it with a friend if you think anybody that you know would enjoy this please give me a like give me a comment tell me what else other kinds of subjects you'd like to see me paint and i might just do that so rest in peace my girly girl 2012 to 2023 I hope she's running in heaven with her bulldog brothers and sisters. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.